Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoyed these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a model that was launched in 2013 using the post-2009 Sapphire Crystal 39mm steel format for the legendary Tag Heuer Monaco. The Monaco Chronograph, of course, originally launched back in 1969, long associated with the actor Steve McQueen in motorsports, and this timepiece redolent of that same spirit. It's not the blue dial Steve McQueen. This one is a sharper, more modern invert panda with shocks of orange, giving it a stunning, striking, iconic, and somewhat iconoclastic look, as most folks are used to the conventional blue Monaco. So an icon of a different color, quite literally, the watch wears fairly easily. As non-round watches go, this one's a bit of a peach. 39 millimeters across, not including chronograph pushers and crown. The watch is 14.3 millimeters thick, so it'll sit underneath most jacket cuffs. And then from lug to lug, you can see across my wrist, the watch is relatively constrained at 47.3. That actually surprised me. I expected it to be a larger watch. A bit unconventional between the lugs, but proportional, handsome, and well stanced. It uses a 22 millimeter lug spacing, so a 22 millimeter strap size. Factory equipment is high grade. This is an upscale Monaco, so you get a leather strap, alligator leather, medium rectangular scale, generously bolstered with a monotone stitch, a semi-gloss black with a sheer cut profile showing you the layers of fabrication. It is a new Tag Heuer strap. As you can see, it is not a perforated strap. It is designed to be crimped rather than punctured by a pin. Therefore, it has a long service life ahead of it. Now, it's all in part thanks to the construction of the strap and the corresponding buckle. You can see the buckle has a twin trigger release so it's quite secure and that until both triggers are depressed, it will stay shut resolutely. There is a crimping system underneath that allows you to set the length and then essentially tuck all additional material underneath the clasp. As a result, there is no need for strap minders or minder loops externally. When buckled down, it's a very flat and clean design. The case is steel with a combination of polish and satin, and you can see the geometric faceting of the semi-shouldered chronograph pushers. Now, this is the caliber 12 version of the Monaco. You've seen versions such as the quote-unquote caliber 11 in the modern era feature opposed chronograph pushers and crown. Now, of course, this is an adaptation of an ETA 2892 with the Dubois de Praz vertical clutch chronograph module in conventional array, so we don't have the nostalgic caliber 11 horizontally opposed pushers and crown, but we have a more contemporary profile with the pushers and the crown all located at three o'clock. The dial is handsome and upscale as the indices themselves are rhodium plated, diamond polished, stainless steel applique and faceted. As you can see, applique indices rather than printed. At center you have sunken registers in the traditional Monaco fashion of rounded off squares and then you have orange varnish. It's sort of red orange. If you can imagine Italian Rosso Corsa, it's exactly that color, which is fitting for a motorsports chronograph. You'll also appreciate that there is a stripe of the color down the center of the hour and minute hands for contrast. You have plenty of loom. We'll talk about that in a moment. There is a stop seconds function. There is also a quick set function, so you can rapidly cycle the date should it run down or encounter an irregular length month. Thanks to the vertical clutch architecture of the chronograph, there is very, very little play, perhaps even no play, in the actuation of the chronograph. This is important because a lateral clutch system often has tons of evident play to the point that hands will jump one or even two seconds on activation. With the Dubois de Praz vertical clutch system, you can see there is no jump or stagger. When the chronograph seconds hand starts up, it beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour and water resistant down to 100 meters. You can see the base of the caliber 12. Now, of course, this is an ETA 2892A2 with a Etacron regulation system, and as you can see, a high-grade balance. This movement was delivered to Tag Heuer in either top or chronometer grade, probably top, because that splayed spoke as opposed to straight spoke balance speaks to one of the two higher grades as opposed to base or élaboré. You'll also appreciate the fact that the watch features that stop-second capability, the 100-meter water resistant, making this one robustly swimmable, provided you 
put it on a water resistant band such as rubber or a textile. 55 joules, it's the combination of the 2892 base caliper which is a thin automatic and then of course the Dubois de Prez module on the top, a model that was cataloged from 2013 through 2015. This is a fairly rare latter day Tag Heuer Monaco. Nevertheless, if you're going to own just one Tag Heuer, as with Moon Watches from Omega, Submariners from Rolex, and the Reverso from Jager Le Coult, this is the iconic and immortal timepiece that straddles generations not just of watches, but of watch enthusiasts. See it and make it yours on the watch box. And we're back with the Tag Heuer Monaco, plenty of loom by night, indices as well as hour and minute hands.